Linda McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have the hilarious Justin Martindale with me. God, we have so much to discuss. Both you and I are just in the news, which we're we- going to talk about. But before we get into that, Justin, mm-hmm. you walked in and I said, who were the girls that got stuck in the utility closet? And mm-hmm. it was under your – you still thought it was the two sisters, and it's not. Now I'm scared. It, But you said you got a DM. So it would take you a long time to go through, like, DMs yeah. to find – all my DMs. Yeah, well, it's going to assume- take a – Take a okay, while. Okay, well, <laughs> you will have to go through them back mm-hmm. two weeks to see who wrote you that night. Yeah. Because those are the girls that were stuck in the closet, not the two sisters. See, but I don't know who the other two girls were. Were there even two girls? Because but you said two people DM'd you and said we're stuck in the closet. Yeah, they said help us. <laughs> so that's who was in the closet, but it wasn't the two girls that snuck backstage well, then in that's, Seattle. That's on them then. I don't owe them shit. <laughs> well, we still don't know. And they've not brought themselves to my attention or anybody mm. else. So they must like still think they're in trouble or something. They might still or, be there. <laughs> or worse, they don't listen to Juicy Scoop. <laughs> or they're just skeletons now in, in this haunted broom closet in Seattle. That is really weird, though, because that was truly terrifying. It was. It was Thank truly God for scary. your giant body, that <laughs> your masculine self, that, like, saved me. Yes. But then something else really you know exciting me. happened to you this weekend. What? Oh. You did another viral tweet. We're going to call you Justin Viral Tweeter mm-hmm. Martindale. Mm-hmm. Tell us what you tweeted, sir. Nothing that not that everybody else was thinking, you know, they came out with the Dancing with the Stars yes. cast, or as I call them, Dancing with the Who's, oh. and um, I don't know anymore, yeah. and Olivia Jade is on it, and I just text, or I tweeted like, send Olivia Jade home. Like, I want her to get the Nikki Glaser treatment, the Kim Kardashian treatment, first one sent home. Right. And I said, stop rewarding bad behavior. Hashtag Dancing with the Stars. I leave my phone for a couple hours, and then all of a sudden, it's like, and I'm like, oh, not again. And Newsweek picks it up, and then I start seeing people comment. Like, people are coming after me. Are we never going to forgive people ever again? And I'm like, no, we're not. Like, sorry, she lied about getting into college. Like, she took someone's place who actively deserved to go to USC. Now, you went to USC. I did, and I always said this. I say, said throughout history, this has by <clears throat> far been the worst white-on-white crime yeah. that has ever happened. <laughs> yeah. Because they people like she took spots from other mm-hmm. qualified white students who could pay for college but didn't know that they could also pay 200000 to get in. They were just going to say, hey, I just need a spot. We'll pay the full amount. But it, but sorry, you only have a four three. You're not getting in. It's those people. So and I just feel those like people, people are. I don't think people are really like, you know, feeling sad for the four point three student that didn't get in. But there is the four point three student that's now sitting down, and that student might also be a really good dancer. True. So that girl didn't get into SC, <clears> and she's <throat> also not dancing on Dancing with the Stars. Well, and that's the thing that pissed me off too, because people were like, it was the parents, not her. And I'm like, um, she sat down and posed for rowing pictures. She she signed off. I watched like, I watched the whole thing and there were definitely kids and I've re- read it there's definitely kids where they were keeping it a secret like Santa Claus or shelf on an elf shelf elf, on an elf elf on a shelf they were keeping <laughs> it like don't and there were cuz there were recorded calls where they're like you know Jeffrey could not know about this mm-hmm. you know or my and there was a one mom that said my younger daughter is you know, this she would be really disgusted by this. Like, she, my younger daughter has morals, not like my older one. The, this younger one, because we did it with the older one, the younger one can actually not find out. These were like non famous people that were rich that spent the money. Right. So, in everything I do see, yes, I think she knew what was up because she went to a school and she had a 3.0 and she went to a school of all girls. It was Marymount and she knew what it took. We all knew what it took to get into the school. Yeah. And she was getting in. And, you know, but the other kids around the school, they were wealthy and they all knew that you could do this. Yeah, now and they so all they know. they didn't care. Yeah. yeah. But now no one can do it. Thanks for ruining it yeah, for me. She <laughs> ruined everyone's fun. Yeah. And that and that's the thing, too. People were just like, 
you know, when she got on the show, she was like, a lot of people know me from YouTube. And everyone's like, okay. <laughs> sure, Olivia Jade. <laughs> That's how we know you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's not your mom. Or no. that your mom went to no. jail. Yeah, that you. No. <laughs> it's clearly your YouTube yeah. channel. She's like, like and subscribe. <laughs> My favorite part of the story is when the whole story broke <clears throat> and she was on the yacht with her other sorority sisters mm-hmm. of the oh, – his name is escaping me, but he's – a very successful guy in Los Angeles. He's great. He he's um he's a, owns all the groves and everything. He owns the groves. Yes. Wow. He developed the groves, wow. and and he's on the board of trustees at USC. And then like he got the call. He wasn't on the boat, but the kids were on the yacht, and literally like they wake up that morning to like below deck situation, ready to have <laughs> like some berries and go on Instagram, and the whole news breaks, and he's like, bring the yacht back. And drop off Olivia Jade, get her off the boat, so then she gets off the boat, and then they're like, bye, still five days left for spring break, Olivia. Could you imagine being kicked off of a yacht? <sighs> Ugh. That was the worst part of the story, I think. Yeah. I mean, like... You can't even rock out to your yacht rock. <laughs> You're like, you, She probably didn't even know what yacht rock is. She doesn't know what Kenny Loggins is. How dare she? Well... But she's also paired up with, like, Val. Isn't that mm-hmm. Val? Right? Uh, sure. Let, no, that's Val. You're right. Yeah, Val, he's like Val. the hot, like he's so hot. And then, yeah. you know, she's just like, I'm living my truth. And I'm like, ugh. She was pretty good. She was decent. I'm jaded about Olivia Listen, Jade. That's cute. Um, <laughs> were you, being that you have this new stardom and that <laughs> Newsweek is quoting you and mm-hmm. people are up in arms about your controversial tweet. Yes. Were people bothering you this weekend trying to get photographs of you while you're having lunch? <clears throat> there were a lot of offers that came through. Okay. Um, I had to say, like, guys, just like Olivia Jade, I, too, am a person. I just need everyone to give me some time. I need to think about the deals that I'm ready to, like, close. Mercury's in retrograde, for God's sakes. Uh, I don't right. know. I don't know what to do right uh, now. And then, because I did hear someone come up to you and you said, well, I'm best known for being a stand-up comic. Mm-hmm. And they're like, nobody knows your comedy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we know you from your tweets. Um, I, on the other hand, was stalked. Mm-hmm. Like, just, really? Just having a lunch by myself. In Philadelphia, mm-hmm. Des Moines, which is 1.1 million followers mm-hmm. on Instagram. Uh, she posts all these like d- uh, DMs of people saying, like, I slept with this person, whatever. There's no proof to it. There's no nothing. But this one, she's like, show me your celebrity sli- sightings this weekend. And um, I actually knew when the girl took this photo of me. And you I, could I, feel it? You I, could feel her? No, I talked to her after. Oh, I think. good for you. <laughs> I took a photo with her, but I think she took it first. And then I'm like, I didn't tell her to go do it. But I th- that or could have been really a stranger. But the fact that she wrote Heather McDonald at lunch in at Love was a restaurant in Philly. Anon, please. And then she did a smile. I think it's because I was so nice to her. Anyway. But also it's like Anon, please. Okay. Like, oh, don't don't tell anyone I was I was there. Maybe but Dumas like a big deal. Maybe because I think I, she did come up to me after because I could tell that she would take the picture and I go, hi. And then I took a photo with her, but with my sunglasses on, I had no makeup. But I think she still wanted to use this photo. And then she might have thought, is Heather going to be mad that I'm using kind of an unflattering no makeup photo? But no, I'm not. And I want to thank you, girl. Yeah. Because. Women supporting women. Get, I have made it. I am with amazing people. Mm-hmm. The other people that they featured in this. And you didn't even have to ask for this. Like Whitney Cummings, Whitney Cummings tags Dubois in like all of her pictures. Oh my God. Yeah. You just you were just having lunch. Yes. Yeah. I was having lunch. I had no idea this was even a thing on her page. And look who's above me in this um screen grab that I grabbed from it. Ran into Nick Vial. Uh-huh. Vile. So I'm up there with Nick Vile. I His mean, girlfriend Natalie, Natasha and Victoria F, F- at Gov ball. Oh, what? I don't know. Who cares? Are we? Do we right, speak English on. anymore? Okay. Let's do a little update on Gabby Petito. Fiance Petito. The fiance is still missing. Uh huh. But police have asked for personal items from the family to get a DNA sample of something. So we, that was just forty-five minutes ago. Oh wow! So I don't know if they think they have something to test it on. Like they've found some other stuff. There's been lots of sightings. There's been more people that have said things. I spent the weekend going a little bit deeper into his psychological ways. And Go on. He's, okay. I've You know, people throw the word narcissist around a lot. But last night I really studied what narcissism is. Good. And, and it's very interesting. <laughs> it's about time. Well, I think like... Because 
because I'm like, if everybody's a narcissist, because everybody always goes, thank God I left my narcissist. And I'm like, okay, if half the people are narcissists mm -hmm. in America, like, is there a way to actually stay married to a narcissist or, or just go, hi, my narcissist husband, he just has a mental illness. Like, Asper not that Asperger's is a mental illness, but I'm saying like, like, or he just has an illness. I don't know. So I read all about this and I was like, um, but it's, it's one thing that they said is like, so he got really mad at a restaurant. They, they found some people in Jackson Hole. The two of them were at a restaurant before, obviously, she went missing and, and has now been found that she's been killed. But he was freaking out about the bill and all like the staff was coming up to him. And he was very, very angry. And according to the witnesses, he was rude to the staff. He left. She came back crying, apologizing for him. For his behavior. For, for his behavior. And then this therapist that I saw that was talking about it um, was like, you know, here's the thing that sometimes when people are with guys like that, mostly I think it's that way with maybe women are like that too, but like where then they're apologizing and then they come back and the guy's even more angry. Mm -hmm. Like that's – now you're disrespecting me. Why weren't you on my side and mad too that they were trying to – charges for extra guac, you know, or whatever the thing was at the Mexican birth. Like, Probably. Like, and then she just has to be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, and try to keep it going. And um, so that part's very disturbing. And um, and then also Dog the Bounty Hunter's on it. Oh, I saw that on Instagram. Thank God. He's, hey, he's <laughs> I am like, thank God. Whoever can find this fucker, yeah, let's where find is him. he? We still don't know. You know, how much did the parents... Is he undercover? The parents know, right? There's been sighting. There's been like people posting photos of everywhere thinking like is he here is he there they were looking around the florida like swamplands but then uh, I, who's to say that, that he was there then a neighbor said no he because there was a moment where john walsh and i both thought maybe he never came home to florida but then a neighbor said no i did see him at the house in florida and i did see them then go on like another camping trip or something so i think he came home I told his parents. Told his parents, and the parents gave him a big running start. Yeah. So I still think that was my original thought. I still think that's it. Now they're going to find him. But I think he he was more and more, like, getting aggressive and insecure with her. And she— um, Over guac. And, and, yes, and, she, and he probably knew she was, like, ready to leave. And now there's proof that he did, in fact, hit her, that that other 911 call came in, that he was physical with her. And it went. Now this was uh, this was really juicy here. So okay. this is a YouTube channel I found, and um, did I get this? Okay, I sorry. Oh, wait, I have to give this person credit. I'll have to find it. Okay, I'll put it in the description. Mm -hmm. Okay, so th I found this YouTube channel where okay now there was this really weird voice um a text that came through to the mother most likely after she'd already been killed okay that said but she the mom didn't know that that said i'm worried about stan i just keep getting voicemails um something like that and the mom was very confused because the grandfather is named stan but the daughter gabby never referred to the grandfather as stan mm -hmm. and so so um someone had alerted me under this youtube to for watching my YouTube the other saying watch, watch this woman and she found this slim shade the slim shady but song she's gone cold and wondering why yeah Stan Stan yeah. Stan mm -hmm. and that Stan is like a super fan mm -hmm. that was obsessed mm -hmm. with slim shady and then goes after so, it was Devin Sawa played Eminem in that video yeah with and, the Dido cover and then in the end that super fan kills, kills his girlfriend him. yes <clears throat> and drives off of a bridge yes and, and then they looked at his Spotify list. They could look up <gasps> Brian Laudry's Spotify list. This song is on there. Gross. And the song's old. For this, someone his uh, age, it's like a 15-year-old song. For someone who's 21, I think that's kind of interesting that that would be on your current Spotify list. Yeah, it came out like 2001, 2002. Right, so And that's where years. the term Stan came from. That's, Stalker fan. Yes. Stan. And so that's... Really interesting. That's because weird. This text I've been talking about for the last couple of shows, and I didn't understand it because I was like, obviously he wrote it, but why would he bring up the grand? Maybe this has nothing to do with the grandpa. And this really makes sense because, 
but let's so you he's know. a psychotic narcissist I definitely think and because her roommate or her good friend at one time that she would go to her friend's house when they were dating before the van trip they'd get in fights and the friend said they'd get in lots of fights and she'd have to spend the night at my house and she would say that he was hearing voices which is a sign of schizophrenia yeah. which plagues a lot of people in their early 20s is when they first Get the signs of it. Isn't it weird? Because I just feel like it's these guys that are just, just break up with your, like, why do you have to kill them? Like, it's so weird. Like, the guy, I think of the hot guy in Texas who, like, put his kids in the water tower and all that. It's not Texas, Colorado. Like, that guy. I've, talk, like, I've talked about that one, too, because there's a girlfriend. lot of similarities. It's so weird, like, how there's something that they just, like, snap and, like. Well, another interesting thing about both those guys, which is interesting, which, when I researched that one, mm-hmm. was referring to that guy in Colorado who killed his wife and the two um, daughters, well, actually three kids because mm-hmm, his wife was pregnant, mm-hmm. um, was he, she referred, uh, like studying it and saying, is he a beta male? So there's the alpha male and then the beta male. And it's fine to be a beta male, but I think for certain beta males, it's like they all of a sudden – like they go along with stuff for so long, mm-hmm. allowing and in in that guy's case, his you know he he I don't think he wanted that third kid. She was overspending. They were living way beyond their means. Then he meets this girl who then is finally like letting him be more the alpha. Mm-hmm. And then I just think and and for some reason, yeah, it's a cowardly way. Yeah. And so and ugh. I think this guy seems very beta. This guy, there's a lot. Going it's crazy. On. There's a lot going on. When Dog the Bounty Hunter's on the case, like, you <sighs> fucked up. <laughs> the Tonys was on last night. Did you watch them? Of course not. <laughs> Did anybody watch them? I'm like, what are they giving awards out for Zoom musicals? Well, I don't understand. It's it's like, like I... There were no musicals for a year and a half. What for was a year the and a for? half, like, Aaron Tve, I think I said his name right, was nominated for Moulin Rouge. Okay. And he was the only male nominated for Best Actor. And surprise, because, he won. But why was he the only one? Because... There was no plays, was right? No, no plays. musicals. Yeah. So everyone's like, oh, Broadway's back. Oh, the theater, the theater. But everyone was like, oh, it's, it, I love coming home because this is like... The Tonys are the prom of of theater, but this is more like a homecoming. So they had, they actually had some like good re- reunions. Like they had uh, Hairspray reunited. They had Chris so you Chandler. actually did watch no, 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 it. I just I just glimpsed. I just glimpsed. No, I didn't watch it. I just saw like some things like Kristen Chenoweth and Adina Menzel saying "Wicked," and everyone's just like, "Oh, the theater!" Like I get it. It's also like four hours long. But how has how has how that must have happened a million times in the past twenty years of people, of them seeing Wicked together. No. Oh yeah, I feel it's like, like their it's thing. It's thing. well, yeah, and it's just it's just very like you know, okay. narcissists on Broadway. So Beanie <laughs> yeah. Feldstein, who mm-hmm. plays Monica Lewinsky in the impeachment, which I'm obsessed with, and she's doing great, had a very unfortunate dress, in my opinion. On oh, absolutely, this was sent to me multiple times yesterday <clears throat> by angry people. angry gays or all angry people. All of the angries, yeah. <laughs> just angry gays, women, children. People were like, Justin, please get this in. I was like, thanks for just burning this into my mind. Um, yeah. Where do you want to start? Well, the color <laughs> is a, a horrible neon green, mm-hmm. and it's it's just not flattering to your shape at all. And the thing that I couldn't get over is, are these two nipples? Are they, Was her boobs crushed, and these two things, the two nipples at the bottom? Oh, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Because where some, are the boobs? There's some low nips. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this is this is the uh, this is never been kissed. This is the girl who was not invited to prom. Her mom might have sewn the dress. This is definitely no, no. You know who did it? It's probably like an expensive designer. No, I'm it's sure. the guy that um, does uh, Project Runway. Christian Sierra. Yes. No. Can you just look that up? It probably double is. Check. That's what the makeup artist told me today. Oh, man. Well, you know. Oh, yeah. Then getting on to something that. Mm-hmm. Oh. This was hot. It was so hot. I'm going to tell you what, right? Okay. TMZ <laughs> had video of people going to a zoo and two gorillas started to give each other oral sex at the Bronx Zoo. Do we know the sex of these gorillas? I have been trying to find that out. <laughs> Can you also look that up after you find it? You did the what dress? are the sex of the gorillas? Okay. Is this a buy situation? Is this experimenting? Is this for their only bananas? <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow, slow. Just... There we go. Um, okay, <laughs> can I tell you? Yeah. I... No one likes to hear anyone's dreams stories. What did you dream about? Okay. But you might want to hear this one. Okay. This was the last article I read before I went to bed on Thursday night when I was in Philadelphia. Oh, God. Also, <laughs> also I was watching old reruns on HBO of oh. The Sopranos. Okay. I went to bed. I had a dream that I blew Tony Soprano. That a girl. And I woke up and I was like, why was I... Why was I giving Tony Soprano a blowjob? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out why. Mm -hmm. And then I was going through TMZ again and saw this and was like, I mean, that's not very nice to Tony Soprano. Why that sparked me thinking of Tony Soprano. But because Tony Soprano's like a, he's like a little gorilla. Okay, I don't know, but it was that's what I did. Did you <coughs> find out who did the dress yet? She's still looking. Oh, looking okay, well, it, are the gorillas? Uh, two men or two? Or, we need or, to know the sex of the gorillas. We know that there was at least one penis involved. Oh, absolutely. But okay. I didn't know. This was fascinating to me because I had no idea that they performed oral sex. I knew that gay was being gay was a natural thing because mm -hmm. at 10 years old, my friend had two bunnies that were both men. Mm -hmm. And we would watch them butt fuck each other. <laughs> And I was like, don't ever, don't ever. I was like, I'm in Catholic school. And if anybody tells me this isn't natural, I'm going to say, screw you. Talk, tell it to those fucking How two old horny you? bunnies. 10? 10? And you were watching bunnies butt fuck at 10? Yeah. Good we, for knew, we knew. We knew. <laughs> like she goes, look. And there are two guys. And I go, good for them. But this is, I love the headline, gorillas perform oral sex at Bronx Zoo. Humans horrified. Like, well, there were a lot of kids. Good. Like, okay, Let yes? them see. So these are what? Wait, al so the alphas. Speaking of narcissists. Wait, so the alpha receive, receive. Yes. Yeah, the so beta. So the alphas received and the beta. Give. And the betas also might kill their wives. Yeah, yeah. Or go camping and one doesn't come back. Yeah. that's. I'm so glad that they didn't get out of the Bronx Zoo and go camping. Well, that's kind of like, I always remember that from another great film I saw, Boys in the Hood. Mm -hmm. That that's when I first found out that men that identify as straight will receive a blowjob in prison, so long as they're in prison. Mm -hmm. Once they leave prison, if they don't, then they're like, "I'm not gay. I only I only receive blowjobs when I'm behind bars. When there's a, a choice of women, then mm -hmm. I'll choose the women." That's what was in that movie, and I was like, "Well, technically, they're in prison." Good point. Wow, this is like I feel like we're writing a sociology paper. We really in are. This yeah. is good. This 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 gorilla is clearly not gay when he leaves the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Besides those two bunnies, mm -hmm. um, the animal story that I've always loved are gay penguins. Yep, and. Gay peng. The best is the story of the two gay penguins that stole an egg. Yeah, we talked about that. They I stole think stole an, an egg episode. and raised it themselves. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, talk about just leading the way of society. Like this is just this is this is broke back silver back gorillas mountain. Like uh, this, where are the women? Like are the women around? Like no, they snuck away. They did a little. They met on Grinder at the yeah, Bronx Zoo. Uh -huh. They had really nowhere to go. And <clears throat> there's no women gorillas being like, oh, Frank's at it you know again. What, you know what it is? And I think this is true for myself, too. I used to always think, like, that would be, oh, my God, that'd be so hard to, like, you know, suddenly realize after 20 years of marriage that your husband is gay. But now, I don't think it would be that bad. Yeah. I'd be like, okay. So, like, anytime you were, like mean to me or not into me. It wasn't because of me. It wasn't it, your it was fault. You, yeah, you really wanted to be with a man. Mm -hmm. So, great. Like, the, the, I met this guy. Um, he is, he does, like, injectables in your face. And he married this <laughs> former football player uh -huh. who had a wife and everything. And he came out very late in life, the football player, married the facialist that does all the injectables. And now that he... The does the ex wife's injectables for free. Yeah. So I'm saying if Peter, you want to come out. Yeah, now is the time. I am fine providing 
whoever you get with is someone I want to hang with. Yeah. I want it to be either someone who will give me free Botox, uh, a decorator, mm-hmm. someone who can do my hair. That If you pick like another bear like you, that's going to not enhance my life at all. Like yeah. you need like the, that kind. Of, I, I can't have a, a another, like he's the bear. Yeah. So I, he needs to be with someone that can like, is going to be fun for me. Then I'm fine with it. You need a fun beta. I need a fun beta yeah, gay. Yeah, you need a fun beta gay. Because I already have the alpha gorilla. Yeah, and there's, you know, and there's alpha gays <laughs> I already everywhere. have a silverback. Yeah, you've got a silverback for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just start learning ASL. <laughs> Just What's ASL? The, the, when they sign, because gorillas sign, oh, don't they? they? do? Yeah. Yeah. You've never seen Coco's kitten? I could kitten? totally do that because I, I took – Like I just offended everybody. Watch no. They're like, that's not sign language. Cancel, Justin. No, but I could do it. I've always been able to fake it really well. Mm-hmm. And you know how they've caught people faking it? Like they. Oh, my it. God. That woman? There's been several women that have gone <sighs> to like the police officers, the, the police department, and faked it. I howled when I saw that woman, the, the, the fraud lady at the, at the police station yeah. in Florida. <laughs> She's just – I can do it right now. You act like the detective. No. no, you act like a detective talking about how we're trying to find this criminal, and okay. I'm going to do it. Okay. okay. We have not found the suspect yet. Uh, police say that his whereabouts were probably in Mariposa County, approximately from 7 p.m. to about 12 a.m. Uh, the body has not yet been identified, but we are still. <laughs> Ma'am, what what did I just say? You just, I just did it. I was just interpreting <laughs> everything. You oh, said. okay. I was just making sure. Yeah. It, it didn't really look like you were signing anything. I was pausing. Oh, okay. Because some are some are words, and uh-huh. some I have to spell out. Uh-huh. That's the trick. Mm-hmm. And then you have to pause because you're thinking. I'm still interpreting it. Right. So to make it look real. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. it just it just looked like you were just like just making it, up. I, this is always a good one. Yeah. And it, go to this always. <laughs> just a fraudulent narcissistic no, sign friend, language person. This friendship. <laughs> I know this is friendship. <laughs> I know this is A. A B C. Yeah, you do have to think. Yeah. My favorite. And then it's like stuff like this, and, and then sometimes it once in a while it's a face. Did you ever see the girl? Yes, do, to I already know walk? what you're saying. I was just gonna say yes when to she this. Does, yes. Oh, like, and she's like. Yeah, and then and yeah, and then it was like, and it's like. And then it's like, I'm going to mop that yeah, pussy. Yeah. And then, and then like, it's she's like, like oh, oh, yeah. Well, that, get that little thing in the back of my throat. Yeah. She's and like, I've I'm, made it. But I was like, I don't think that's the actual sign language for a blowjob. It has I to be. I bet it's something like, like blow job, like I, what, like, what is your job? And then if it was, and then whatever the word blow is, so it'd be like, I don't think it's. Uh, 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 I, when it's no Cardi way. B and Megan the Stallion no, talking say, about yeah, a blowjob, do it, do it at the concert. But I'm saying, if I was steady, if I was fake doing it with the detective at the police department, and they said, and you know, get your children out of the rooms, but uh, apparently there was a blowjob that happened, I wouldn't be like, <laughs> I would do it like, and there was a. <laughs> See, that's a yeah. blowjob that happened. It's like a, it's like a soft. Yeah, Beach. it has to be, and you have to be thinking about it. And yeah. When you're overly animated, they're going to be like, that person isn't really. Yeah, the the fingers are the poems of the soul. Like, it just needs to be like a wispy, yeah. like, mm, like wordplay, yeah. not just a. Have you ever done a stand-up show where all of a sudden they're like, we we do have a deaf interpreter because we were, it was made aware to us that someone was coming to your show that's deaf because I've had it happen to me. Really? No. And they just stand there and it's, do it? It is kind of hard. Because you're just watching them. The times that it's happened, I'm just like, I just don't want to. I just don't want it to be in my silence because I get easily distracted. If someone's talking, ordering a, a drink too loudly, it's like I'm like, hey, I'm not telling you. So, so yeah, it was kind of hard. See, I would like to see stop it. and watch. And I like, know, it's like weird. that would be more of the show for me. Is like, am I going too fast? Like, I mean, do I need if to it slow ever down? happens again, I'm going to say I want to film this because I want to see what it looks like. Yeah. all my jokes. Yeah. Yeah, you should. Like, do do, do they yeah. give a blowjob? Like, what? Yeah. Because I do, I think I've... I would watch that. Yeah. Not that, but like, I'd watch like the sign person. Yeah, do my that. jokes do it, I don't yeah. Need, I don't need you pleasuring Tony Soprano in my mind. A huge story happened. <sighs> biggest, sh- biggest thing ever um, is that The View mm-hmm. had to tell Sonny and... 
What's the other girl's name? Anna. Anna, leave the set, and they're doing it live, so everyone thought, oh, what fun game are they playing while they're telling them to leave? And then they came back, and Joy's like, well, they tested positive for COVID. They both had the vaccine, so I'm sure they're going to be fine. This was a mess. Did you see? Because you know what else happened, right? No, what? So Vice President Kamala Harris was on the show, and she was supposed to come out. And they were like, oh, in the middle of the show, they're like, you guys have to leave because y'all tested positive, which I'm like, don't you, aren't you supposed to know that before the show? Also, isn't this like a huge breach of security for the vice president? So then they leave, they finish the show. So poor so- vice president Kamala Harris is just in a broom closet, phoning it in like a, like a Zoom call. She's there, but she's just like. So oh, then she did it on Zoom? Well, yeah, they, oh. they just had her like in a remote location around the set somewhere. But then I read somewhere that now they tested it was a false positive. Well, that is good. Right. And I thought it and what's I was happening. The I, view. I actually thought it would be a false positive. Like, why wouldn't you test a couple times? But I do think maybe they got a little laxed because like I just did Daily Pop today and they had me go at 615. I got my rapid test. I went back to my car, and they made me walk all the way around this long way by myself. Mm-hmm. So if I had it, I was in hot. Then I go sit in my car for 30 minutes, and then I come back, and they're like, you're negative. So then I go to where we're filming. Yeah. So And you just some, nightly pop, though, right? Did I say daily? I meant nightly. I mean, nightly yeah, no, pop. It's, anyway, it's, nightly <laughs> pop. But, the, but I'm like, so if they're getting tested every morning mm-hmm. on the rapid tests— then, yeah, maybe they got the test too late or they're becoming a little laxed about it. But, yeah. Because then you would think, even if they said, okay, you're positive, Heather, I would be like, okay, I, I won't do the show today, but let's take another test because I really want to make sure that's true. Right. If I don't feel sick and I've been and I've gotten the vaccine, but. I think, I don't know. This, I mean, it's it's, it's fishy to me because, first of all, why, they're, they're, sitting, they're sitting over here, they're sitting over here. Clearly, they've all engaged before the show. Yeah. So I want, I need Joy and Sarah's test results. And I don't know. It's, this isn't live. Is it live? Oh, it's always live. The view's live? The, yeah. I mean, it's live on the East Coast. It's live. Oh, okay. I don't know. It just seemed very That's like, what makes staged it to me. And they're like in the middle of the show, we're like, oh, we've got to ask Sonny and Anna to leave. And they were like, okay. There wasn't like a why. I- I don't think it was staged at all. That is not anything you want for someone to think that you don't have perfect COVID protocol in this mm-hmm. business. Oh, these two. So Megan Fox and <laughs> Kourtney Kardashian, they really are marketing geniuses, or Kim is. And I so they do a big lesbian type of shoot in Skims. And they're touching each other, and they're hugging each other, and they're eating an apple together. What are your thoughts? I just remembered I had a dream about Kourtney Kardashian last night. Was she giving you a blowjob with Tony Soprano? Oh, was she? No, it was it was her and and um <laughs> isn't that weird? But she was in like boy drag, so no one would notice her. But I was like, oh Courtney, hey. And they're like, shut up, Justin. And I was like, okay. Yeah, and she was with what's his name? Um Travis. Travis, yeah. Yeah. And they were like vacationing, and I was there, and it was dark. Hmm. Oh. Anyways. I mean... What do you think about... What do you like? Yeah? They're like the new thing. I mean, I think it's brilliant, brilliant marketing. The pictures are hot. The underwear looks cute. It's very phallic. It's like two girls giving a speech. Um, (laughs) I mean... They're kind yeah. of turning into the same person, aren't they? I know. It's like she's – it's – yeah, let's see where this goes. But, but hey, take advantage of it. Make the money. Who cares? Look, your whole life's been your, – your kids are – your kids have been exposed to everything. Every, like, so you're never going to embarrass them anymore. Yeah, no. So I'm, if it means making out with another mother of three, two mothers of three. That's what you need to do. Making out – and dating tattooed younger guys. Well, I don't know if Travis is younger, but good. Go for it. It matches up. Yeah. Be lesbian bait. That's yes. what we need to do. Start heading women to lesbian bait. Yeah. I mean, it's the same with Brandy and Julie. They do this shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a picture. Yeah. A Juicy Scooper did yes. send me a picture because it was like a, a, a slideshow. And... Megan's hand is so like badly photoshopped. Oh, where it, it just looks like a, a like a little claw. But good for them. Whatever they're having fun. But okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. <clears throat> this came out page six. 
got a hold of uh, Tom Girardi mm-hmm. leaving his now assisted living place with his um, friend who was also part of the business at one time, the law firm. And they're like, let me ask you, do you think Erica knew? And he goes, um, she knew. He goes, I, I, I think so. And for me, I, okay, I do think he definitely has Alzheimer's. Now, he's been doing these crimes against his victims who are his clients taking his money for like 20 years. So mm-hmm. I don't think that takes away what he did. And But listen, it can, it can move really quick. Yeah, I was going to say and, he's aged like 10 years in two. And the, his, his physicalness yeah. makes me think that it's it for sure real. And the, when he came up, he did this like thumbs up thing. It reminds me of a lot of when people are start to lose it yeah. and they're just like, They don't really know what to say. So they're like, let me just do this because I I know, especially really smart people, they try to hide it. Mm -hmm. They try to hide it for as long as possible because they know that their brain is not as sharp. And we know even though he did criminal stuff, he was really bright. So, yeah, it was pretty disturbing. Then there's rumors that she is uh, allegedly. There's allegedly. Allegedly. People are talking. Uh Uh-huh. That she has a new rich sugar daddy of course she does out in vegas of course she does and they've pointed him out but i'm not going to say who he is why not because i it's i don't know what the the real background is and i don't don't know if he's married or what but 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 like putting together (laughs) her connection and that this individual used to set up the big vegas law conventions so she would have known him for a while and he is also an older white guy that has a lot of money. Of so if she's sticking with a particular type, I don't know. And she was just she was just in Vegas. Detective McDonald's on the case. <laughs> Get out there, kid. So <laughs> anyway, there you go for that. Um, this was kind of juicy, also in the Housewives. God, she world. looks great there. She always looks great. Oh. Serena. So Sutton, who comes from a lot, a lot of money from her marriage. Not her childhood. She and her husband didn't have a lot that much when they got married, but he was some big, I don't know, financial person. Mm -hmm. Um, It has now been revealed that she gets just alimony alone, $300,000 a month. Just alimony, not not, um, child support. Which, by the way, my Venmo is Justin Dash Martindale. Love you, Sutton. And Sutton lived the life of a really rich woman prior to Real Housewives. Yeah. She was uh, going to all the fashion shows. She knew Dolce and she knew Gabbana. She knew all of them. They gave her dresses. She was in their books. She walked their runway. She would go to the fashion show. She went to the Met Ball when actually rich people were just invited to the Met Ball. And she was actually on a reality show about two fashion designers that was on one season of Bravo. She was their top client. So it's not like she came out of nowhere. She obviously likes this. Even in her first season where they introduced Sutton, I think that – because wasn't she just a friend of the season before she became a cast member? And everyone kind of knew that she was like this, you know, we're going to Fashion Week and she bought all those like clothes off the runway. Very – yeah. So she goes on Watch What Happens Live and – one of the storylines is that Lisa Rinna gave Garcelle some shit by mm-hmm. saying, like, you know, I you really liked Harry Hamlin's sauce. And you liked it so much that Harry and I drove all the way over to this house and brought you some more of that sauce. Garcelle's like, yes. And she's like, I never got a text from you or a thank you card. And Garcelle's like, but I thanked you when you handed me the sauce. Garcelle, did you thank me? She's like, yeah, I thanked you. So the conversation was like, what do you think, Sutton, about Lisa Renna <sighs> expecting another thank you after the thank you's been in person? It's mm-hmm. not like the gift was mailed or dropped off by an assistant. She told them both, you know, thank you for the sauce. What's the so, sauce? It's just like, you know, Harry, Harry fucking Hamlin thinks he's a big chef. He makes uh-huh. a blueberry pie. He makes a really good... Bolognese. Oh, it's it a spaghetti a bolognese. sauce. Okay. And Garcelle was just eating it up. And I said, you know what? <laughs> Harry Hamlin, let's drive over to Garcelle's house. It's not on camera, but let's make sure I bring it up on camera. Yeah. And give her this sauce for no reason, but just that I'm a really good friend because I'm accused of not being a good friend. So 
it comes up and I know people, that sort of discussion, are you supposed to do a second thank you, whatever. So Sutton says, well, I find that, she has a Southern accent, I find that interesting because a couple of years ago in 2017, I knew Lisa Renna and I invited her to be my guest at the Elton John Oscar Ball and it was $10,000 a person. Mm-hmm. And I spent $20,000 on the tickets for her to sit at my table. And I don't believe I ever gotten a written oh. thank you after. Then Lisa Renna doubles down and is like, I've been going to that Oscar party for years. Elton John has invited me himself. So here's Happy. what I think. This is what I think happened. <laughs> I think in the past, maybe she got a freebie invite. Uh-huh. The way you do at charity events. And the year that Sutton invited her, she did not have one. No. So she did need an official ticket to sit at the table. So she's not really lying. She may have not pursued the free ticket. Then when invited by and then by invited by Sutton, she was like, sure, why not have the money go to the charity since I've never paid before? Right. Like that's not something to brag about that you don't pay for the charity event. But all these big stars that go to these charity events. They don't pay. Right. Their, their thing they're is just to bring, bring uh, awareness to it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, good with that. What are your thoughts? I mean. Have you been invited to Elton John's party? Oh, God, no. I've tried to get in once. No, you did. <laughs> Unsuccessfully. Yeah, it's not. like I. It's I wa- really hard to get in. Ooh, I, think, I wish I knew Sutton. God, I know. I think well, I've, I do know her now, but not, team, I don't think she'll invite me. I'm definitely yeah. team Sutton, and I think the truth is in the sauce, you know? Clever. It's, it's Clever. Sorry. Elton John's party is bigger than a bolognese sauce. Yes. Right? I agree. I'm team Sutton on this one. I'm team and Sutton she went on, and you said she went on Watch What Happens Live and said this? Yeah, she <gasps> said it. And she was like, I'm not, I'm not going to say it. I'm g- That's some Southern shade. Oh, Southern, Southern women are the best. I'll say uh. Okay, oh. this is very sad. Michael K. Williams, they said his cause Speaking of death. Speaking of sauced. Was ruled accidental Mm -hmm. overdose involving fentanyl again. Now, you were saying you know somebody that likes to enjoy cocaine. Mm -hmm. And you were worried about her. Mm -hmm. And she said what? She has a little tester kit. Testing testing it, yeah. And you said... (laughs) If you have to test your drugs, maybe you shouldn't do the drugs. And I sent, I showed you that thing. There was a thing that I put in my Instagram stories about this couple that they were just arrested for like 26 kilograms of fentanyl, which could kill 50 million people. Isn't that crazy? Because just the smallest amount. And it's being cut with everything. It's not just like. But why are they putting it in? If it's the smallest amount, it's not like it. Like I could see someone going, I got a cocaine and half of it was baking soda. Mm-hmm. And it took me 12 lines to get high. Mm-hmm. To me, that makes more sense. Well, I don't. Baking soda is cheap. It, like I understand filling it with stuff. Or the baby why, laxative. You why, know, yeah, something. Why Shit they, yourself. Why not? <laughs> why are they filling it with something that. Can kill you. And that's so small though. Then well, you're still going to have to have a lot of it. Well, that's the thing. Like fentanyl is what killed prince okay you know but he had it cut in something else it was like a it was something like a muscle relaxer or something or and he died remember and then um this this is what i don't understand because i've heard that they're trying to they're putting it in the drugs because apparently getting it cut with the normal stuff that they do in columbia or whatever because of covid it's been hard to actually get it pure but then I'm like, well, why are you putting this in there if it's going to just kill off your buyers? Right? Yeah, COVID ruins everything. COVID really you does. Can't, you can't have food on American Airlines anymore, and you can't get, get good Coke. I mean, <laughs> what, what has the world come <laughs> to? God, that's all we want is something other than a bag of peanuts and a line in the bathroom. Wait, what did um, what was the Michael Jackson drug that he died oh, of? Um, it was not fentanyl. That was propofol. Oh, I knew there was an F or yeah. a B in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do I know of this? And that was, and that was uh, just like a to really put you to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's like you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't really shame anybody, but I just want them to be careful because we did. You talked about it with Chris, yeah. like last week about you know the, the comics, the comics yeah. who passed away, and it's like I get it, like have your fun, whatever, but just be careful. The point here's the thing: you can't have the fun anymore. You can't have the fun anymore. You can't have the fun and, anymore. You can't have you, you know. Listen. 
There are certain things in life you have to just say, that ship has sailed. Yeah. And doing cocaine at a party. Yeah. Uh, it, no, it sailed. You it's, can't do it. It's You know, and I'm not an advocate for cocaine usage, but it's just like, just be careful whatever you do. It's, it's you know, whatever people are taking, Too bad. We, you and I are seeing it out in the streets, yeah. you know, you like know when we go there to was these a shows. Time, there was a time when homes were allowed to have diving boards. They don't have them anymore? No. Homeowners insurance in California, they made it so high that you can't have a diving board when you sell. Then you might have to go – you could maybe put a diving board on again, but you can't have a diving board. And people were really bummed about it. They're like, I want to do flips off a diving board. And my mom just said, I'm sorry. The diving board's gone, girls. We're not having a diving board anymore. It's too dangerous. Too many people have died. Yeah. You can't have a wonky slide either. But girls, there are two male bunnies over there having sex, so go enjoy yourselves. So watch the bunnies. <laughs> Dive from just the edge of the pool, not off of a diving board. And unfortunately, you can't do cocaine now either. Yeah. <laughs> so some things, there are certain words you can't say anymore, yeah. and there are certain drugs you can't do anymore. The party's over. The party's no more over. coke for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, true. Oh, my God. Now, this was your thing. And why are you so obsessed with this? Please tell. Uh, first of all, what a great kickoff to spooky season. Days of our lives. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. As a, as, a, as a 90s kid, like, my mother and my grandmother would, like, watch soap operas. So there was a weird time where I was just watching, you know, the town of Salem, which, come on. And Marlena and John are, like, icons. So, like, 25 years ago or something, yeah. Marlena got possessed by the devil. Okay. Yes. And like it was, exorcism? Like, full on. Did she take had, a crucifix and try to screw herself? No, no, no. Oh. No, no, not like that. This is oh. daytime, girl. Okay. No. That was juicy. We know the party's over, but, like, yeah. there's some limits. Okay. Like, so she got possessed by the devil, and it was, like, one of those moments where you're like, wow, we're really going here. Now, have you ever been possessed by the devil? No, I have not. I but haven't I'm, either. Libertad de la portante. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I am so sorry. I've always that been sort of happens. fascinated by it. Yeah. Has anyone been possessed by the devil in real life or is it always just like they're having a psychotic thing happen? Or really – because I, I mean as a Catholic, they do teach priests how to go and – Yeah. And do – and like – I was obsessed with the movie um, The Omen. Oh, yeah, The Omen. Oh, Damien's the like Omen. everything. Yes. Where... Damien, it's all for you. Yep. I know. And the that, best. that was a story about this woman who adopts a son and she's, her husband's like big in some, like in the parliament. Politics or, or something. Politics, yeah. yeah. And yeah, once he gets to be about six, he's like starts to do kind of weird things. He was born on June 6th yes. of 1966 or something and, like yes. that. Yeah. And so then I just remember she goes, Don't you think it's strange? That Damien's never been sick. He's never had a cold. He's never had an earache. Well, our son, Drake, Mm -hmm. was weirdly healthy, too. Mm -hmm. He'd never been on antibiotics or anything. And then one day I was like, let me look through your hair. Because then she looks through the hair and she sees 666 on the the head. So I was literally looking through Drake's hair. And just looking for a tattoo or something. Just looking for 666. Okay, what happened to her? They are now coming back with the storyline because it was such an iconic moment in soap opera history. Because it's like you always see like, oh, I drove off of a bridge and now I came back and I've got amnesia or whatever. This was like full on demonic possession. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Salem in Days of Our Lives is not – it's a small town. They all know each other. But it is Salem, so you'd think if it was going to happen anywhere, it'd be Salem. Yeah, but I mean like she was like full on like levitating on the episodes wow. and she was like, the blood of the children will drink. And you're like, okay, relax, Marlena. Yes. This poor woman. But also I feel like – wouldn't that be embarrassing? Like if you were the person in town who got possessed not once but twice and they're like, oh, Marlena got the devil. So are again. you going to yes. DVR? Okay. <laughs> there – I am – and I just I just don't know why she's been picked. It's definitely like jumping off because it was so ridiculous at the time that it even got like the that soap opera Passions. Yes. Do you remember Passions? Yes. With the like haunted doll who came alive and then they had past lives where they were on the Titanic and oh god, it was just garbage and I can't wait. I'm here for it. Um Okay. And there's never a gay person that's been possessed by the devil. You know? Because I think we're already dead inside, <laughs> and I think the devil's like, mm, y'all are cool. Like I want to get, I want to get like a like a, a spinster lady or something. Okay, Britney yes. Spears. Have you watched the new special? I watched it last night. And what are your thoughts? Same old, same old. <laughs> there was no new information. Well, they because New have... York Times says there was a surveillance 
apparatus that surrounded Britney Spears. Describe describe what that was. The most disturbing thing that I got from it was that there is actual audio. So they talked to the security team, which Uh uh, it was called like Baller or something like that. Black Box or something? Black Box, something something like that. Okay. And they talk about like how – you know, her finances were being taken. She's only worth $60 million. Mm. Isn't that crazy? She's like Madonna status. She's like Lady Got. Like, she that's should what be people like, are getting for podcasts right well, now. <laughs> right, right. Like, that's less than that. Like, that's what's crazy. She's $60 million. Yeah. Um, they talk about, you know, her, her X Factor. They talk about Do you think all of she's her... only worth that much because no. there were so many people on the pay roll. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So they actually said there was one woman, uh, the, the, her costumer is being interviewed. Felicia, her old assistant manager, is being interviewed. Um, and then, you know, they're all just kind of like really like – sad for her because the new details were that there were being she was being filmed in her bedroom they have conversations with her her and her kids and then her and her boyfriend which i think means they recorded them having sex um but the audio Mm. and so there was even a thing where they were like oh we got to like wipe these files because it's a little too much and then they talk about her um with that new released audio where she's like i'm over this conservatorship it's been 13 years i'm done um, I'm looking at this picture of her right now uh-huh. and her teeth look so pretty and white. Mm-hmm. And I remember people talking about like, w- when did she get that split in her teeth? She started oh, yeah. to have a like, split in teeth. I heard from someone that knew the dentist, mm-hmm. her dentist. And it was that, now this is just hearsay, but that he was told, no, like they're not paying for the Invisalign. The conservatorship oh. would not pay to like have... And that happens sometimes. Teeth move, yeah. A- even as adults, and so she wanted to like fix them, and they would not approve it. Well, do you remember the last time it was like one? Last time or the one before when I came on here, we were talking about her phone. Yeah, and we were like, why does she just have like a like an iPhone seven or yeah. something? You know, like, and they even said that like that she there were days where she didn't have a phone. There were days when she they were allowed to have a phone. They get, they let her have a phone, and she was just like. I need my phone. And they used it. This was actually really fucked up because they had a um, – um, there was a venue when she did – when she was doing her tour because she just finished her – it was right around the time of her Vegas residency. And then they closed they, – they added more shows to the Vegas residency. And she was like – she it's a YouTube video of her being like, hey, don't smoke weed at my show. And I remember when I went, there was like a big – like people were just smoking weed at the venue and she's like, please don't because if I get traced for weed, I don't have my kids. Right, like they if you get used, in your hair. They used her kids against her, which is really fucked up. Yeah. Her own family. Here's the thing that really pisses me off about, oh, I'm getting into it. Yeah. Where's her mother? Where's her mom? Well, there was an interesting thing that just happened today under one of the posts. The mom said... I don't know what a post was. Someone sent it to me, though. And she said something, and the brother commented, like, these people don't know what they're talking about or something. And there's a brother, too. Yeah. That was, like, on the payroll and has never spoken uh, on her behalf. And so he's losing his gig. And, yeah, so it's interesting. I have to watch it. I have not seen it. I mean, it's good. It's, like, it's about, like, an hour long. But, like, the, um, you know, and I, as I was watching it, I was thinking of all the footage that I've been seeing lately on social media and, like, you know, her Instagram and then these videos that pop up with Jamie Lynn. I'm like, imagine being in the audience and your sister, who nobody gives a shit about, no one cares about Jamie Lynn, like, get out of here. She's up on stage and she's like, keep on dancing until the world ends. And it cuts to Britney being like, oh, that like, was my the- sister singing my songs. Like, well, oh, let's talk oh. about the, Okay, wait. I want to go to this first. Oh, yeah. I want to go back. Uh-huh. Speaking of sisters singing the song. Yeah. The other two uh-huh. on HBO Max, yep. there's two seasons. You can binge Just them got picked now. up for a third. I thank God just discovered it this weekend when I was going to and from Philly. Oh, by the way, we're going to be at Irvine Improv together this weekend, everybody. <laughs> we go to HeatherMcDonald.net, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, live Juicy Scoop on Sunday with Justin, as well as Spencer Pratt and Lala Kent. Mm-hmm. Still tickets left. Go get them. Anyway, I'm watching this. This is hilarious. Basically, the story is they, it's a scripted show. SNL writers, SNL stars are in and out of it. Mm-hmm. Molly Shannon is the mother. It's like Pam. as if, if <laughs> like it's like when Justin Bieber hit it at 13, right. if he had two other siblings that are uh, 28 and 30. Mm-hmm. And she's 
the third the girl's like thirty and kind of like like kind of a mess, but funny. The guy is a good actor that hasn't made it, the brother. And it is so funny on so many levels. I can't even it is so clever. Yes, it the is. jokes that they think of, like it's as clever as like Veep. When it's very it's, detailed. Oh my god, it's so good. And it just reminds me because of the all the basically he's Justin Bieber. Mm-hmm. And well, he's like a, he's like yeah he's like this young kid who like wrote a song called Stinky or whatever. Yes, <laughs> <I> stink. <laughs> and then there's just some funny parts where they're like, um, he's 13. Why are you sexualizing mm-hmm. him? And like, why are these girls like doing these booty dances and stuff? And it reminded me of when Justin Bieber came on Chelsea lately. So that he came on when he was 13, 14 years old. He, when it was like we were one of the first talk shows he did. He was the sensation on YouTube, mm-hmm. and basically. The entire interview was Justin pretending like he wanted to fuck Chelsea. Wait, what? Yes. What? It was all this flirty going on. It gets worse. The next time he comes. To the show. To the show. Okay. To be on the show. <laughs> the next time he comes on the show. <laughs> yeah. He's very, he's very sick. And there, I go, oh, is he not going to do the show? And they're like, no, a doctor's coming to give him a B12 shot right now. Perks up, does the show. And I think on that one, the joke was that now Chelsea is attracted to him. I don't know. The third time he comes, okay, they write a sketch for Sarah Colonna, Jen Kirkman, and I to dress up all slutty. And we come to his green room. And now all three of us are trying to fuck him. And at this point, he's only 15. Jesus Christ. This would be so different if it were men. <laughs> I know. It's horrible. It's such a bad double standard. That's so weird. While we're doing that bit, his mom is there, oh, who's young. She had him really young, so she's young. She's only like 35 at the time or something. And she's, she's like talking to a, a makeup artist or something, chatting, chatting. And, and the guy who's directing it comes in, and he's talking, and Justin goes, shh. And everyone just froze in the room. Like he was like the kid from, you know, Twilight Zone that was going to turn you into the corn. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like everyone was terrified. Malachi. They're like, we're sorry, Justin. Justin, he's like. And it was kind of a sign of respect to the producer, but at the same time, like, wow, this guy's about... The fourth time he came, he was just throwing food at his big, huge black bodyguard, and the bodyguard just had to chuckle. So it was like, oh, my God, now he seems like he's, like, evolved. He's, you know, a married man. I've always loved his music, always thought he was super talented. So this show is so clever in that they're kind of, like, taking all these aspects of Justin's life. Just how ridiculous it is. Oh, my God, but it's hilarious. We rented a plane for his music to drop, and, like, there's cameras everywhere. It's live stream. You have to watch it. Do you think, you've seen this stuff with Hailey Bieber, right? Yeah. Do you think that he's, like, Good to her. So when he, he and Haley were at the Met Ball, yeah. the fans started screaming Selena. Yeah, I remember and that. apparently she cried. Don't, don't say it on this podcast. We know what happens when we say I'm not saying anything against Selena. Selena. No. Some of those people, obviously, were the people that were writing me. Yeah. Okay. She's a great so, person. <laughs> and he was like, and I felt bad for him that, I mean, I felt bad for her. Yeah. And that he was trying to be protective of her and it was kind of mean. And it may have not bothered it at all. This is all just TikTok People Editing. Anal- analyzing yeah. this, like, you know, footage from far away yeah. and a mal- looking at the mouthing of the words. I and- think they're so cute, and I just, like, wish the best for them, but it's just, like, I hate how they're just trying to spin it. That They're like, oh, he treats her like trash, and I'm like, just shut up. Okay, so I want to show you something that I found. Yes, what is this? This is Boss Baby Brody. He's this little boy, he's six, and he's this big uh, Instagram sensation, mm. and he mouths songs, and he has a mom, a dad, and an older sister, mm-hmm. and the sister's like 15. But as I'm watching this is right when someone brought this to my attention. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is a lot of similar stuff in that he's the star. Okay. He's getting you know the $50,000 to post. But the family is like all about it. And he dances around and does um, lip syncing. <laughs> I thought he was here. <laughs> I was like, that's the Juicy Scoop like lettering. I was like, did you have him here? But in the – so he does this one video and the and the mom writes like, Brody's experienced this amazing thing. He's doing a dance video and the and the lip syncing is like not good. Now, I'm not being critical. He's only six. But oh, I'll be critical. They're making him lip sync. But the sister in the back is actually a really good dancer. But it's, it's, she doesn't matter though. But she's, but she's a, a 12-year-old white girl. No one cares about her. This is a, a little boy or a little girl? It's a little boy that's very fluid in what 
he wears. Got it. So that is what everyone is loving. Like, oh my God, brace be yourself. But my thing is, I think, unlike a child star, because mm-hmm. I've went, I've gone back and forth on the subject. I used, to, I was originally saying like kids that do Instagram and and are internet YouTube stars, that are these big stars. You know, hey, well at least they're not getting their fingers, their feet photographed by Dan Schneider constantly. And those people that did all those Nickelodeon shows and Britney Spears included Disney, are not doing stuff. great today. Yeah. But then on the other hand, at least a child star that's on a regulated ABC sitcom mm-hmm. has to school. only work so many day- hours <laughs> a day, have school, yeah. make sure nothing's going on, and the parents can only take 10 or 15% of the money. A fifty thousand dollar check. Now, maybe, maybe this is being regulated. I don't know, but like, I wonder. And this is my question: If your child is getting a big checks to post, mm-hmm. and you're obviously posting for them because they're a child, but you're making the child have to take the photo and have to dance around and do these things. And this, and the stuff he does is very scripted. He's mm-hmm. not coming up with mm-hmm. it. But the main thing is, it's very sexual. Mm. It's sexual. It's a lot of dancing and a lot of flipping. And then there was just this one. That was really good, by the way. One, this <laughs> one bit that we saw, the dad goes, "Who cooks better, mommy?" Or me, oh, shit. and then and then Brody goes, who's only six, Gordon Ramsay, and he's so sexy. Gordon Ramsay, a six-year-old man, a six-year-old saying is so sexy. You know that that wasn't a natural thing. They're not comedy writers, the parents, and isn't that funny? Or maybe they're trying to get Gordon Ramsay to do a collab with him. I don't know. This is but gross. I'm like, it's like not that. okay. And I think too many people are just seeing it and going, this is so great that a little boy is wearing a crown and dancing. And yeah. that is great. Yeah. But if like if a little girl was doing that, we freaked out about John Monet. Just because he's a boy being sexy and flamboyant, why is it now like okay and funny? Because I think he's being just as sexualized Absolutely. as a girl. Absolutely. And uh, here's the thing. Like I have I have friends of mine who have kids and like uh, you know, they're all big on TikTok and all that stuff. And I'm like, I always wonder, I'm like, do the kids want to do this? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm always like, do they think like, okay, kids, come on down. We got to make a TikTok in about 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah. Let's go. And it's like, uh, but I don't want to. I want to like play in my room with my toys or whatever. This this is dark. I didn't know about this. This, I don't, mm-mm. no, I don't like it. I don't like it. So that's the, and I feel like everyone's just so quick to jump on the hottest trend. Like, mm-hmm. Like, people are following just because they don't want to be left out. You hear about that, the, yeah. the term FOMO, fear of missing yeah. out? It's like, oh, if I'm not following Boss Baby Brody, then I'm not cool. And right. I'm like, but I don't want to follow a baby. I'm a grown person. Well, he is six it, now. Well, <laughs> he's six, but also, sec- like, fantasizing over Gordon Ramsay, apparently. That's yeah. my job. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't <laughs> the kid. Let me fantasize over Gordon No, Ramsay. but then there was this other video where it's like, K is for Katy Perry, and then switch, and and he does like a Katy Perry look and a dance. K is for Kelly Clarkson, and then he switched. So that, I'm like, this video means that. So they're that, baiting. They're but baiting also the this celebrities video meant to that see. This kid had to change that many times. Uh-huh. He had to do this many different dance moves. He absolutely had to work that day. It's child labor is, violation. Yeah, is he You're actually. You're a child getting, labor yeah. person. Yeah. So there you go. God, that's terrifying. That's that's this him? one the dad was trying to get into. The dad was oh like yeah, singing no, the too. dad is and totally then wanting the to... dad was. It started out with the dad, and then he brought in the kid, and I was like, no one cares about. Wait, the dad. can I see the caption real quick? When Daddy Gorgeous has lost his what? What? Yeah, he calls when him, Daddy Gorgeous. He calls himself Daddy Gorgeous. Who? Or, the dad calls himself Daddy I guess Gorgeous, so, or maybe because the mom posted it, she can call her husband Daddy Gorgeous. Is he though? <laughs> he's like a what? A, he's like a. Like a seven? I don't know. That's really weird. This, this, yeah. this is weird. We gotta, we gotta stay on top okay. of this story. Speaking of also weird, the two other thirstiest people on earth, <laughs> Meghan Markle and Harry. Page Six is reporting that this trip to New York, mm-hmm. they they believe it is going to be for their Netflix show because they brought their own videographer for when they went and visited like the school in Harlem and stuff. And there's a viral video going around where. All the kids are hugging Prince Harry, and he just pushes this one kid off of himself really harshly. Have you seen it? No. Why? Because the kid called him Daddy Gorgeous? 
<laughs> He's like, they're all I'm hugging. Approach a call. <laughs> they're all hugging him, uh-huh. and then one is like around its wa- his waist. So maybe he felt like he was a little too close to his private, a little too tall. So I think, yeah, I think it was a little too, you know. And then all of a sudden, he just pushed him off of him, and I think he was doing it for a good reason, not because he didn't want to hug this child. I think it was because it made him uncomfortable where it was. Yeah. Did the kid fall? And did the kid cry? No. Well, then, no harm, no foul. And um, <laughs> anyway, and for the most people that cried saying we want a private life and leave England, I mean, my yeah, God. Yeah, leave us alone, but like don't. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, I want to talk about this. This is Real Housewife of Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. This woman, Jen Shaw, is facing seven years in prison for doing a fraudulent telemarketing business. Pyramid scheme, right? Yes. But she, at this point in the show that we saw last night, she has not been arrested. But this other woman... Um, Meredith Marks, who oh, God, she I talks like outfit. this, um, she does not like Jen right now because her son Brooks, who fancies himself a fashion designer, yeah, he's he's hot. Can well, I say that? Yes. Yeah, so a couple. Am I daddy he, delicious he, now he, or whatever? He's twenty or twenty one. Okay, perfect. And he dropped out of college to be a fashion designer and be on the show. Okay, so he loved being on the show. Jen Shaw, there's evidence that she liked some fans' tweets. That called him a twink. And Meredith, and Meredith is like, you know what? I told you, Jen, you don't talk about my son. You know, you don't talk about Brooks. He hasn't even faced his own sexuality. It's well, not out. Don't talk about it. And I'm like, okay, I don't like Jen Shaw, but this is about the most, at least she was being honest here. So one time she was being honest is when she liked to tweet about, I mean. He is a twink. He's a twink. He's a gorgeous twink. And I think he's, <laughs> he's almost loving more because now this is their storyline. Yeah. I haven't come out yet and I don't appreciate an adult woman coming. And she's mad. Are they Mormon? Because it's Salt Lake? They're, they're not Mormon. Okay. They're Jewish. Okay. But they are, do live there. But Jen Shaw is like, well, I didn't like that he said that he saw my vagina when I lifted my legs in front of him. And then she had said, you know... Like, he's never even seen a vagina. And then, well, so then Meredith is like, don't say that he's never seen a vagina, Jen. Okay? Don't talk about his sexuality with my son. Okay? I don't like it. I'm not going to put up with it. And neither is Brooks. Brooksy doesn't even know himself yet. Let him decide and be the one to say it. I'm like, you're on a Bravo show. Yeah. You're a fashion, you dropped out of school so you could be on Real Housewives with your mom and do a fashion show. I under. I mean, how many more flags do we need? You should have had a discussion as a family. Yeah. So he's so now he's like the first kind of like son housewife. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You're gay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I and how old is he? Twenty twenty one. And and the first, I came out the at first 19. person that called him out the first time it was a Watch What Happens Live, and it was Isaac Mizrahi. And he was like, I'm a huge fan. I love the gay son, Brooks. Oh, and they kept shit. that on, and she didn't come after Isaac Mizrahi. Well, I believe- and he just assumed. Yeah. But she's like, why is my friend liking things? Then Jen said, I have a team that does that. I didn't like it. But she knows what she's doing. I think she also started like her own like fan. Um, you know, they always have like, when a, when a housewife first comes on and they already have Jen Shaw fan Instagram, uh, Jen Shaw is doing the fan Instagram. Oh, absolutely! Like it's someone's like account. the first night's kind of someone's going to be like, "I love this woman. Let me start a fan account." Well, and here's something also to consider: it's like they probably want to save him actually coming out for a very special episode yes. of Real Housewives. Like, oh, he's so brave this and he did it, it. You know, this is what it is. Yeah. So last, so now this whole season he's going to be. I can't believe she said that. We hate Jen for saying this, mm-hmm. but the really this season's going to be at once she gets arrested, it gets juicier, but. So the next season will be my coming out party. I'm going to have a party. I'm going to have a thing. I'm going to have an event. I'm going to go to this. Pride. I'm going to float. Look yes. at us. I'm an yes. ally. I'm a yes. mom. I march. I'm going to collab with uh, <laughs> yeah. Baby Brody. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to collab with Baby Brody. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm have Julie, <laughs> Julie, I'm con- Julie be my security. <laughs> yeah. I'm confused by this. Yes. And so maybe someone could tell me and write me. Vicky Gunvalson is doing this like all star show right. with Dorinda I saw on that. the Peacock. And she apparently she is she says, You're all gonna die from being vaccinated. 
Again, I'm confused. Don't they all Vicky. have to be vaccinated? You would think. So I don't know. Oh, Vicky, uh, though. Cynth- Cynthia Bailey left the show. She's Real House of Atlanta, and she's the gorgeous one, married for the third time. I think she left because she's already had two weddings. <laughs> and she's on the girls' trip one, too, right? I guess. I think she is. Oh, yeah, on the girls. But yeah. that's a different one than the one I just talked about. There's one in the Berkshires, which are like all the people that are no longer on the show. Like Dorinda, Jill Zarin. And then there's one where they go to the Bahamas, and that's all the hot people that are still on the show. God. And I, I don't know if she's, like, no, she's like, I don't know if she's on. Kenya Kenya's on. I don't think she's on. The housewives are like COVID now. There's just there's just different there's, strains. There's variants. There's variants on Peacock. <laughs> on the, yeah, just different variants on different channel. coasts. Chris Como, did you hear about him? Daddy Gorgeous, yeah. He um, <laughs> he hit on his former boss in sure. 2005 at a Christmas party. Okay. And this is and that's her? Yeah. And she said- <laughs> God, don't say her name five times in a mirror. <laughs> she said- <laughs> He came up to her and hugged her and then like cupped her ass. Mm-hmm. And then she said, I can- He said, I can do this now. Now that you're no longer my boss, he said to me with a kind of cocky arrogance. No, you can't, I said, pushing him off of me at the chest while stepping back, revealing my husband, who had seen the entire episode at close range. We quickly left. Okay. Now, if this happened to me and a guy grabbed my ass and Peter was there, Mm -hmm. he would do absolutely nothing. Peter? You don't think? No. (laughs) He's like, no. No. Well, did you see the guy at Disneyland who was dressed up as Gaston? No, And what the happened? woman came up to him and just grabbed his pecs. Okay. And he was like, you need to go. You're done. You're done. And like yells at her. And she's like, oh, okay. Did they kick her out of the park? I don't know if they kicked oh. her out of the park. But yeah, I, I've had girls. Like, I think I had some... I had some moments in Seattle where some ladies were getting a little handsy on my on my chest, but I wasn't like, enough is enough. <laughs> I do feel, though, sometimes being a gay guy, girls do then take advantage of that thinking like, I can grab him, I can touch him, I can grab yes. his ass. And again, it's not okay. But it's also vice versa with gay guys saying like, oh, I love your tits, Heather. Like, it's like, yes. nope, 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 nope. There's, nope. A lot of guy, there's a lot of gay guys that are into tits. Yeah. They like to look at them. They ask about them. They say, "Oh, what's your bra?" Like they're like, they're like intrigued. Yeah, but don't play around with them like a kitten with a ball of yarn. You can't just like <laughs> nice tits, Heather. Peter, like, would you care if if Justin grabbed my boob? I'm yes. not asking you to. See, I it's would. It's up to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> I don't think this girl's husband cared either because it happened in 2005, but, and now God. it's you know look. Um, it's not great for him with the brother and stuff, but I don't think he's going to lose a job over it. Do you? No. he And she, I'm sorry, but she looks like she invented fire. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, <laughs> we'll save these other stories for another day because I've been thoroughly enjoyed you. Oh, this and is I, fine. And we always. have so much to talk about mm-hmm. because on Sunday's show at the Irvine Improv, we'll be doing hot topics, mm-hmm. answering questions. So is ever coming to that show, bring your questions, bring your, send me your topics. Um, that you really want us to cover or like classic ones. I want to do some like uh, Juicy Scoop history with you. Oh, okay. And this, some like, improvisation. Yeah, totally. It'll like, be so fun. And then on Friday and Saturday at the Irvine Improv, two shows a night, we're going to do a hilarious stand-up comic. Justin, what's your last name? I don't know anymore. Martindale. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just kidding. Did you have a stroke? No, I didn't. I was totally joking. I was totally joking. Yes. Maybe the devil possessed you for a second. I was totally, I swear to God, there are times that I blank out, but I wasn't. I was yeah. just like being totally. Yes. Uh-huh. Anyway, who cares? Justin says stand-up, then I do stand-up, then you have a great time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything's at heathermcdonald.net. Meet and greet. Right? And then you also have a podcast. I have my podcast, Glitter and Garbage, available on Spotify and iTunes. And also in October, I will be back on the road with Jim Jeffries, the 21st through the 24th. And then I'm headlining in Austin at the Creaking Cave uh, Theater on October 28th and 29th. I've got two shows. I got four shows, actually, that week. So go to the Creaking Cave and get your tickets, please. I'd love to see you, Austin. Thank so, yeah. you. Love yeah. you. Love you too, sweetheart. Bye.